Let's say you're trying to figure out whether or not you should upgrade a, a system to the Microsoft's latest operating system. Let's say it's Windows 7. Um, and maybe you're on XP or Vista and you're not quite sure with the RAM that you have and the applications and the software and the hardware and, and, and so forth. Well, there's some neat tools that you can either use built in to, uh, if you're an XP or Vista or Windows 7, the MSinfo32. .exe, but you can leave off the .exe. We'll give you a, all kinds of information on your hardware resources, and this would help if you had DMA or interrupt IRQ conflicts or memory address I/O conflicts and things. But you can also get information on the hardware, the drivers, the software environment. Um, going to try to make this quick, but here. There, all right. I'm scrolling down here, giving you some info on my IRQs. Let's look at the software environment. All right, so that's a useful tool, but but um, there's actually a tool that's been designed by Microsoft to help you in terms of figuring out whether or not you can upgrade something, and it's called the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor, and you can download and install that. And I'm on Windows 7, so it wouldn't really do any good because I'm already Windows 7. We already know that we can't upgrade directly from Windows XP to Windows 7. We would have to first upgrade XP to Vista and then Vista to Windows 7. But let's download and use Microsoft's tool on Windows XP to see what it tells us. There's a tool we can use. Um, it's for a free download from Microsoft's website called the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. And first run an XP machine in a peer-to-peer -peer work group called Battle Starts and this is the Poseidon and so I'm just going to open up a web browser and this is Windows XP Professional Service Pack 3 and you can go right to Microsoft's website but it might be easier just to you know go to Google type in Windows 7 upgrade advisor and maybe download And a lot of times Google does a better job of giving you links to Microsoft than Microsoft itself does. Microsoft doesn't have real great search functionality, at least I don't think so yet, but Google, you know, so whatever, whichever way you want to find it, but in this case Windows up, uh, 7 Upgrade Advisor download, so I'm just going to follow the link here. Just make sure it says Microsoft. You don't want to go to some, you know, counterfeit phishing website or something and get the wrong tool, but... All right, so yeah, 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 what is it? Blah, 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 you can download it, what you can do with it. I'm gonna click on download. And we'll try this in Windows XP and Vista. And actually, you cannot upgrade XP directly to Windows 7. You'd have to upgrade XP to Vista and then to Windows 7. And who'd wanna do that? Because I, I personally don't even like upgrading one OS to another, let, let alone two, because it leaves all kinds of uh, bits and pieces of files, it's just, it's never as good as a clean install, if you know what I mean. Um, yes, it's more trouble, you, you know, format, you got to start over, you got to reinstall some things, but I, I would always recommend doing a clean install over an upgrade, but just for the purpose of using a tool, this can be a convenient tool. If, if for, you know, for matters of convenience, you don't want to do that, you don't want to do a clean install, you'd rather do an upgrade, this tool can let you know, or even if you did want to do a clean install, it would let you know, um, you know, maybe of issues you're going to have with hardware and software. And I'm just going to modify it one setting in XP so that it shows I want to display show him files and I want it to display file extensions and things like that and I want a security tab in XP so I'm going <coughs> to always do that. But Alright, so this is on our desktop now and it's just Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor Setup EXE. I'll go ahead and click on it and I'm going to run it. Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor needs blah 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 blah. Turn to make my download. Would you let's download and install this video? Yeah, okay, let it do that for us. Just a dependency we need to meet. And what's the okay to the installation process? Uh, next. Next. Let's install. For the dependency, the .NET framework.
Okay, so the .NET Framework 2.0 dependency has been installed. And now let's go ahead and configure the Upgrade Advisor. I accept the license terms. And then let's go ahead and launch it. And check to see if your PC is ready for Windows 7. Start to check and... Okay, and now it'll tell us what we need to do here. You need to perform a custom installation of 32-bit Windows 7 and then reinstall your programs. And again, um, in this case, it's just basically saying, look, you're not able, we're not able to upgrade. There's no possibility of upgrading from XP to directly to Windows 7. And of course, I told you that before we started this, but I just want to show you how the tool works in, in both Windows XP and, and Windows Vista. Now we could, I, like I said, we could upgrade Windows XP to Windows Vista and then upgrade Windows Vista to Windows 7, but good grief, who'd want to do that? So now let's try the same tool and we'll try it on a, win, uh, excuse me, on a, a Windows Vista machine instead of Windows XP. So we know about the tools telling us, hey, we, we cannot upgrade this Windows XP machine to Poseidon to uh, Windows 7. Now let's try downloading and using the tool on Vista. So we're just using the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor here, a uh, free tool we can download from Microsoft, and I've already downloaded it and put it on a file server here so called Frankenstein. So I'm just going to copy it over and win a directory called WinSoftware a bit. So you just Google for it, download it like we did in XP, and install it, and this time in Vista. And remember we learned last time that you can't upgrade directly from XP to Windows 7 you'd have to upgrade from XP to Vista and then from Vista to Windows 7. But this time we're in a Vista installation and I'm going to run the Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor installation. Run. And I have to confirm through user account control in both Vista and Windows 7, which remember that's the Microsoft version of SUDA or SU. And accept the terms and I'm going to go ahead and click on install. Okay, and it's been successfully installed, and that was the, the setup, the EXE, and again, let me go, why Microsoft does that by default, I'll never know, but um, just so you can, if you do this, you'll be able to more easily tell the difference, some people get confused between those icons, and don't use the sharing wizard, so you get the security tab, and all that, but if you allow the viewing of hidden files and file extensions, then you know you can tell. So that's to set up binary executable, the exe file. But this is a shortcut to actually running Windows 7 Upgrade Advisor. And that's what we want to do right there. And continue. And I'm going to click on Start Check. And it'll go through and analyze my Windows Vista uh, computer and advise me on anything that I have installed you know that I may need to upgrade hardware wise, software wise, applications the issues I may have upgrading from Vista to Windows 7 okay and here we go and notice it's telling me before you can upgrade to Windows 7 you need to install Windows Vista Service Pack 1 and I can download Windows Service Pack 1. There's a link right here, even if I want to do it. 16 gigabytes of free hard disk space is required. And it's just letting me know my hard drive space. So there's an issue there. I've only got 12.3 gigabytes free right there to upgrade. And then through system requirements passed. And I can install the service pack, but at least, you know, this way I have an upgrade path to Windows 7. And it would let me know, you know, what I need to do, and I could just go and download Service Pack One. And actually, I've already downloaded it on my file server, Frankenstein, and I could just access it across the network. But that'll just give you an idea of the tool, and it's just kind of a nice tool that will take some of the headache out of determining what you would need to do if you were upgrading from Vista to Windows Seven. In my personal preference, I like a clean install. 
Uh, it's a little bit extra trouble, but you know, it, there's so many issues with upgrading sometimes um, with old files and things. But. So let's download and install Vista Service Pack 1. And you'll want to download a Vista Service Pack 1. And I've got it on my network file server. I'm saying I, I've forgotten how much clunkier and slower and buggier Vista was uh, compared to Windows 7. Yeah, Vista was kind of like Millennium Edition, you know, the the red-headed stepchild. But uh, you know, there were so many kernel changes when they jumped from XP to Vista. I guess you know you had to expect a lot of a lot of issues and things, and I don't think they really got them ironed out until Windows 7. Definitely a major difference even on the same hardware and in the same environment. Y si claro se habla español, no se pronuncia Vista como un gringo, pero Vista, Vista, Vista. Como una vista bonita. Alright, so I've just copied the service pack file over. And... <coughs> can run it. And then I want to confirm that with user account control. And now with Vista service pack 1 installed. Okay, and now uh, service pack... Service Pack 1 is installed, so if we go over here look there's Service Pack 1 and Vista, so again if we were to run the upgrade advisor and we'll continue. And start check. And in this case you can upgrade to 32-bit Windows 7 Professional, Ultimate, or Enterprise. And again, we just need to, you know, make sure we have enough hard drive space. We may need to expand the partition, but that, you, you know, as a tool, you can see how it. You could go through and then correct each one of these. In this case, my video driver. Um, I may have to upgrade that, and it'll it'll just give you an idea, sort of a heads up of some of the issues you may have upgrading from Vista to Windows 7.